This is the first year I've really wanted to quit. The first year I've been like, I'm fucking done. This is Ruckus Makers, a show about entrepreneurs, where the mission matters and the status quo isn't an option. I'm your host, Zach Reinard, and in today's episode, we're talking with Lana Roth, the founder of Banana Inc., and her journey as a designer, entrepreneur, and founder of a one-of-a-kind Idaho Makers shop. Well, I own Banana Inc., as you said. Um, it's I started it back in 2011. So it's been a minute, um, which has been crazy. I've had a brick and mortar in downtown Boise for about eight years, I think. I think eight years is right. It might be, I got to check that, but yeah. it feels like it at least, at least seven or eight. So, but yeah, it's been a fun journey. Just, you know, um, graphic design, that's what I went to school for. And it's just been a really cool thing to connect with people through and with. So, yeah. Yeah. How'd you get into graphic design? Like just knew it as a kid? Or, yeah. Or I took one of those classes that you did in high school where like that two hour block, you get to go to that like off site place and like do something fun. And I, they had a graphic design program and I, I was lucky at 18 getting to take it and be like, I want to do this. This sounds super fun. So yeah, it kind of combined a couple, like a love of art, but also like being relevant computers and whatnot. I mean, that was like 2005, obviously computers were around, but you know, it was just something to still do art and also kind of still stay like in that mainstream. So yeah. And then yeah. went to BSU after and, uh, stuck with it. So it was there awesome. You Were you naturally talented at it or is it one of those things where you worked harder than everyone? <laughs> I think like most people, I think everyone has a form of creativity within them. It's just whether or not you like take the time to invest in it. Um, I grew up in a really creative household. Like my mom was actually an art major. Mm -hmm. So it was very like, like we grew up with like a ceramic studio in our basement. And so like I got to create art all the time and it was very encouraged and like very desirable. So I think I got lucky in that sense. But um, my dad on the other side was like, he was a salesman. So I think like the whole graphic design was a good combo of the two of them on some level, like with my upbringing. Yeah. I feel like parents, um, <laughs> I'm dealing a lot with this with my kids of like shaping them in good ways, right? I, I want them to be themselves mm -hmm. and that I also want to teach them good things. Mm -hmm. Uh, your, your parents, were they a huge influence in that? So you, like, did your mom let you like do pottery and yeah, make I stuff? mean, the, she was already doing it. So I, I mean, I had access to it regardless, but they were very encouraging with my art, I think in many ways, like, um, you know, when it came to actually starting Banana Inc., it's one of the stories that few people know that I love to tell is, like, um, my mom was the first one that, like, paid for my first show. Hmm. So I had just graduated college, and I had seen one of these, like, things where you, like, set up your art. They have all the booths, and, like, artists, like, sell their wares and whatnot. And uh, it was in Stanley, and I was like, God, I've always wanted to do one of those. It'd be so fun. And then my mom was like, well, I just signed you up, so you're going to do it. And I'm like, what? I hadn't even come up with like the concept of banana ink yet. And then I'm like, I gotta figure out something to sell and like show, like how do I show my artwork as a graphic designer? It's so difficult, you know? And so like she was the big, a huge influence on even me just like biting the bullet and just like trying to put something out there, so. Yeah, kind of forced you to do it. Oh yeah, no, for sure. I was like, I, I chose shirts because I think shirts are like this everyday vehicle for us to like experience art. So like they are bringing it into our daily um, as well, like different from like something on a wall, like you're picking something and you're connecting to something that you actually get to wear. I think that's a cool like way of expressing yourself creatively. So um, I mean, I just chose that because it's just like, I've always been kind of in that retail world. But then, you know, getting to make my own designs and put them on a T-shirt, it was something accessible to people to, like, connect with. And I chose Idaho because at the time, like, no one had been creating Idaho stuff for yeah. locals. So, um, yeah, I just kind of, like, took that concept and, like, took the concept of, like, keeping the Idaho shape and everything. And Banana Ink was was born, like, in Stanley, Idaho, first show, like. Yeah. What year was it? 2011. That's what I said. So. And the show was in Stanley. It was in Stanley, Idaho. So. Not exactly a big place. No, but like the show, I thought the show was good. I mean, I sold out of like some stuff and I'm like freaking out, you know, like took mm -hmm. all my savings and bought a bunch of shirts and <laughs> it was great. So I ended up journaling that weekend, like, um, maybe I could quit my job, which would be ugh, amazing. 
So yeah, what were you doing at, for work at the time? Um, gosh, I think I was like kind of I was fresh out of college, and I was like still working at Bogus, and like so I was I was like managing through the season, and then in the summers I was just trying to figure it out. So it was just like seasonal work. You're just working anywhere mm. you can, sort of thing. So yeah, yeah, it was fun. It, it, it's interesting. Um, if you go back and look through, you know, an entrepreneur's journal, right? You mentioned mm-hmm. you, you wrote about that. Um, you find these iconic moments where uh, you foreshadow the future, right? Like you write this mm-hmm. down, like this would be really cool if this happened. Mm-hmm. Um, are there any other things that you've written down that have come true? Like with with the biz? Mm-hmm. Well, um, okay, I will say one. Like I was running the business out of my apartment and like people were coming to like my house to pick up orders and shit and stuff. And uh, (laughs) then they were like, like I sold online and then I also still did shows. And I was like, I need a space. And I saw that there was a space available on 9th Street, like right on the corner of Bannock and Idaho um, or Bannock and uh, 9th. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, it'd be so cool to have a shop right there. And then like two years later, I had a shop on that same block. So that was a, that was a big one in terms of manifesting. Yeah. A little and now bit. we're still there. Yeah. A little bit of, Hey, that that's going to happen mm-hmm, in the future. Mm-hmm. I, I've just noticed that we've, we've interviewed enough entrepreneurs that those types of moments happen Yeah. more often than people realize, yeah. like where they you just look at it and I don't know if it's, if it's, you know, faith or, or, or manifesting or, or just being positive or, or if it's well-intentioned, mm-hmm, right. And people mm-hmm. just work towards the things that they want. And, yeah. Um, I don't know, call it luck even. Like, mm-hmm. I, I think there's there's so many pieces to that. So um, take us back to, uh, you're in school, you're 18, you're, uh, your first graphic design class, you go to college, you chose graphic design as your mm-hmm. major. Uh, how did, what, what did school look like for you? I mean, it took me five years. Like, it was, it was a fun experience. It was the first time in my life where I'd got to actually do something that I wanted. Like, we're all in high school and having to, like, take the curriculum, but... I feel like college was my jam. Like I loved it at BSU. Like I did live with my parents the whole time I was in college. Um, thanks parents for helping me pay rent. Um, but right. I don't know. It was, it was great. I loved it. I loved the classes. Like I've, I love staying in town. The campus is beautiful, way different than when I was in school now, obviously. But yeah, I, I loved the journey and you know, I think I did really well in it, honestly. Yeah. Did you, uh, were you administrative in your classes? Like, like, did you take them very seriously and do them well? Or was it more of you just wanted to do art or? I just wanted to do art. I mean, I did do well, but I think that's because when you find something that you're passionate about, when you find something that actually like lights you up, like you can't help but kind of do well at it. And I think that's super important and hard to find in many ways. Like I think, you know, we don't give ourselves enough room to try a bunch of stuff, but I think when we do and we get to try some things, you're like, this almost comes a little bit easier because I love it, you know? And I think that was my experience with graphic design or art in general. Um, I don't think it was necessarily like, yes, people are inclined towards art, but I do think, you know, when you love something, it just kind of happens that way. So. Yeah. Um, it's like you can just work longer, mm-hmm. work harder, oh, yeah. more passionately yeah. and just go for it. When you get off work and you want to go home and do the same thing that you've just been doing, like that's how I knew. Like I would get done doing graphic design all day at school and then, you know, come home and want to be on my computer designing. Like, I I mean, I didn't need much more evidence than that. So, yeah. yeah. So that first show that you did that your mom signed you up for, how old were you during that show? Uh, okay. So I graduated 2010 and so I guess I was like 23. Okay. Around there. So just graduated college then mm-hmm. and you were kind of needed to do something mm-hmm. and, and mom was like, Hey, here yeah. you go. Yeah. Okay. No, well I was doing like, I d- did some freelance graphic design. And so I'm like going into this like idea of like business world with graphic design. Like I was just in school, you have fun projects, you love all your stuff. And then all of a sudden here's the reality of like, you're graduating, you're working with businesses, you know, and, and it's a little, it was a little like not inspiring to make like brochures for you know, companies. I was like, I always had the dream that I wanted to like design snowboards for Burton. Like mm-hmm. that's what I thought like my graphic design could take, like where my graphic design could take me sort of thing. But, um, you know, kind of getting it into that reality, like I just really wanted an outlet to be creative. I just needed an outlet to be creative. And I think that's what I was seeking in that moment. I wasn't really mm-hmm. looking to like start a business or like, you know, open a retail store a few years later. Like I just wanted to 
be expressive and have people connect through what I made and have that experience. And so the fact that it made money was like just a side benefit. It wasn't necessarily like the main goal. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Started with something you love. Right. So, um, you're doing shows. Mm -hmm. How many shows a year were you doing? Well, I mean, I'm like, at that point I'm a newbie. Like when we do other shows, like now that I've been in kind of like the circuit of like at least ones in Idaho, like you see the same people, like this is what they do for a living. Like, or they just tour around like the Pacific Northwest and they do these shows. At the time I was just saying yes to kind of whatever could fit in my schedule. And so I was probably doing like six or five or six a year maybe seven which is a lot given like Idaho like my product stayed in the state Mm -hmm. and so like you but you talk to other artists who are traveling to Seattle and Portland and doing big these huge shows so like I got to really get a good handle on like where to go and what shows to do at that time so it probably hovered around like seven or so a year yeah yeah and so you're buying inventory and Mm -hmm making things and and do you make your own clothing? Yeah. Uh, So I partnered, like when I first started, I I stuck to what I knew, uh, which was graphic design. And then I found a guy in Boise that could help me with the screen printing aspect. And he was just starting his business too, actually. And it's funny because like 11 years later, 12 years later, 11, we're still printing with the same local folks and like their business has changed and grown, but like we see it as almost like this is a a partnership in many ways. So I was lucky. I think that I got to like partner with someone who was really good at what they did and, you know, make what it is that we make. And keeping it local was super important to me too. When I was first starting, like there's always online, you know, spots to print stuff through and get it shipped to you or whatever it is. But I wanted to be involved and hands-on and, and also like support the local community. And so that was, I mean, we're making Idaho stuff. Like it can't, it can't be, you know, in my opinion, it has to be made here in many ways. So, or at least printed here. So, yeah. Yeah. If you're making Idaho gear printed out of California, that's kind of a bummer. Yeah. (laughs) Kind of defeats the purpose. Totally is. I mean, so I think that's, I'm very proud of that. And I'm, I'm like proud that we still to this day, even though like I've had people at those shows, like come up to me and be like, you know, you'd probably make so much more if you just da, 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 da. And I'm like, that's true, but it's not it's not a part of our, you know, passion and heart. So Yeah, it's not yeah. your core. It's not it's no. not why you do it. Right. Totally. So um talk to me about the name, Banana Inc. Mm. Where 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 did that come from? What's the story there? Yeah, this is a cautionary tale for all business owners. Think about what you're naming your business before like 10 years from now so that you know you can answer the question over and over again. Um I Honestly, like 23 year old fresh out of college kid was just like, and I never decided to change because I thought that was a bad branding move to ever change your name. Like I just wanted something that represented me. And so I had this little, I should have, I wish I'd brought like a a picture of him, this little running banana character called Frank. And he was like my mascot. And it was like, he was always in this jogging position. And, um, through all my art, like high school, college, he was representative in my work. And, uh, so when I wanted to name something or something that was mine, I wanted to name it running banana something, but running banana ink sounds like I own a running shop. So I just went with banana ink. It's like the silliest thing. And I didn't know I would stick with Idaho. Like I started there and I was like, okay, people are like getting into it. Like maybe I want to design other stuff. And then I'm like, no, I think this is it. Like, I think this is where I want this to go. And so I just stuck with it. It stuck. And it sticks out in your mind a little bit, even though we still get, like, Banana Republic. Like, we're not obviously confused with them, but people go out to the mall being like, oh, shoot, I was looking for Banana Ink, or vice versa. So, yeah, yeah, it's pretty funny. That's unique. (laughs) So so the banana character was just always there. Like, when did that first get introduced to your life? Um, yeah, I made him up in high school. So he was (laughs) just like, I just think you pick something. It's so funny to say it now because it's such like the, like the thesis of banana ink is like you pick something and like you can make whatever you want out of it. So like when you think of like improv, like someone like, here's a prop, here's a banana, do something with it. And you're like, the first thing like phone, okay, whatever, like boomerang. And so like, there's this ability to create something, you know, with whatever it is that you've been given. And like, I decided early on to choose the Idaho shape. 
And it's just like the theme throughout. Like, so in that, I guess I'm kind of like, now that I'm thinking like analyzing myself, that's my MO is to just like stick with it, you know, through the, through the process. So Frank was representative of that, of like, you know, you can find creativity in all these, all these ways. So Mm -hmm. yeah, it's funny. There you go. It's funny to be talking about him like he's a person. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, since high school, that's that's pretty great. Yeah, pretty yeah. Great to have he's my that little long. he's my little mascot. Yeah, I still have a painting that I did of him. I've done animations and like all sorts of things, but like I have a painting of him above my desk to just like remember. So yeah. There you go. So you're uh, just graduated college. Uh, probably living with mom and dad, I'm guessing, or or Mm. did you move out? Cause I did move out right after. Yeah. I moved out right. Thank God. I moved out right after like, you know, I was, I was, I put my time in. Mm -hmm. So yeah, got a little apartment and, uh, living on my own. Didn't have roommates luckily, I guess in that sense. Cause I'm like, here's my business in my space now. But, and even at the time, like I didn't think of it as a business. I just thought of it as like, you made some shirts and people like them. So keep making them. So, yeah. Yeah. and that was the only source of income at the time. Um, not at the time. So like when I started, mm-hmm. no, I, I had, I had those like freelancing jobs through the summer. I was still, okay. I worked bogus for about like two plus years. Um, well, like after I had started banana ink mm-hmm. and cause I, I really like everything was bootstrapped. Like I didn't get funding. Like I had borrowed money from my parents on occasion, but I always paid it back and I didn't really have credit cards. Like everything I sold, I put back into the business and I really didn't take much money from it until like later. So yeah, I just like started there and out of my, out of my apartment. And then I shared an office with someone like when it got to the point where like my boyfriend at the time was like, can we like this third roommate that's here? You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I found an office with a friend and then at that point she was like, I'm tired of people coming to our office to pick up orders. And so I'm like, this is a problem. Like, I think everything I did was in a response to a problem and like, how do I solve it? And so then I'm like, okay, if I get an office somewhere else, I might as well have a small retail front. Mm -hmm. So if people came down to get orders or do whatever, like they could shop. And I found this teeny tiny basement place. Like, so if you know Boise, there used to be a superb sushi downtown in the Idaho building, which is so fitting. It is the Idaho building. And there was a little office like out on the courtyard and there were businesses back in the day that I super admired that had a shop down there at one point in time. And so I'm like, this is a cool spot. I'm just going to look here first. It's so funny to like, you know, in many ways, like imitate the people we liked or the businesses we liked and just like where, how they started. And so it had like a, like 15 by 12 foot room in the front and then like the same size in the back and the back was my office and the front was a retail shop and that was the first banana ink so which was like I think that's when I quit my job at Bogus like right as I was getting that store I'm like I don't have any time I had already like committed to a season that I shouldn't have like just trying to transfer and you know that job was really conducive to starting my biz because like I got to be on my laptop a lot like work work in the retail shop alone I'm like, there's a lot of downtime. So like building my website, building like other designs, like kind of doing all those things. Like I, I was lucky to get paid, you know, while I'm building another business. Like I kind of like shout out to my boss, like, love you. Like I did, a, I, I swear to God I did work like too, but you know, so, um, yeah, it's, it, I think those opportunities are really nice. So when I think of like people starting stuff, I'm like, sometimes taking that pay cut for like a job that is conducive for you to starting something is like maybe worth it. So, yeah. yeah. When you signed that first lease, uh, how much was the monthly rent? So I love this story too. Ah, so many good stories. So my current rent, like just for me was 450 a month and this place was 500 a month. And I'm like, Oh my God, I'm double. I'm paying more than I pay to live. Like what the heck? I'm crazy. And like my parents were really resistant. Like they were supportive, but they were like cautionary people. They were very like, don't take risks, like be smart, all these things. And so like when I was even starting banana ink, there was a lot of like, Oh my God, this is crazy. I can't believe you're doing this. And even when I was getting the store, it was the same kind of lesson, the same message. And, but I, I went, I negotiated a six month lease 
I was like, please. Cause she's like, no, we got to do a year. I'm like, just like, please though. And so she gave me six months at 500 a month. And I'm like, I did all the calculating of like how many orders I was doing. I'm like, I can make it happen. But then I'm like really going to have to quit my job because someone has to run the store. And then, uh, yeah, went for it. And after six months I'd signed, I told her, I was like, I'll sign 18 months to make up for the fact that I like only signed for six. But even in that time, like, um, it came with a parking permit too downtown, which is like huge and huge. Like if anybody parks downtown now, like we pay like over a hundred and something a month for like permits. So, um, yeah. And then I, I, after like a year, I think plus, so I didn't even make it the full eight additional 18. I was like, we need, we need, it's another growing pain. Yeah, like we got to get space. out of here, you know? And I, I also like struggled with the fact that we were like, this was all I did. Like this wasn't, it, it became all I did. It wasn't a side gig anymore. So, um, any, again, funding came from the business. And so I felt like if we don't pivot to like getting a bigger shop, we're going to get left behind in many ways. Like other, more, more Idaho apparel companies were like coming down the, the road. And I'm sure. like, even though we may have been like first to market in many ways, like on this concept, like this is now like people are want this sort of thing. And so I thought like this is the time for us to transition to the bigger shop and and have a presence downtown where you could actually find us. We weren't in a basement, you know, and like all our followers and like all the people that really just loved what we do. Like, I mean, it's true for the from start to finish. But at that point, like they helped us survive, like they found us in that basement space, you know, they figured out on GPS, like how to get there, you know, and and that made all the difference. So and still does. So, yeah. Yeah. So you moved into your bigger store. Uh, obviously numbers are getting bigger. You're working hard. Uh, did you ever think about quitting? This is the first year I've really wanted to quit. Yeah. The first year I've been like, I'm fucking done. I think everybody thinks about quitting when they're having a hard time. And like these, these huge transitions like are <laughs> almost anxiety inducing just thinking about them. But like, I mean, we went, so I told you $500 a month for that space in the Idaho building. The new place was going to be, I think after triple net, it was 1700. And I was like, holy shit, this is huge. Like, what am I supposed, this, if I thought 500 was a lot, but then again, that whole growing pain thing. And sure, I had plenty of nights that I'm like, I, what if I'm just making this super wrong decision? Like, you know, when you don't know and no one can tell you that you're making the wrong decision or not. Um, and you're going to get a variety of opinions on it. So depending on who you ask. So that was tough. Like that was scary, really scary. And I think, um, I got my first employee like in the smaller store Yeah. and, uh, I definitely think having her there, like, you know, that was huge too, to pay somebody. She, I had her quit her job right before, like yeah. she was, ha- she was just part time with me. And then I'm like, I want you to be full time. And I'm like paying someone else's wage is like so intense. Like, and the, and again, like I'm in my twenties, like it's, it was just a lot. So I'm sure there were lots of times that I was facing a lot of like stressful things. And, you know, I just thought of the alternative, which was not getting to do what I do anymore. And I, it, it sounded worse. So I just yeah. went for it. Yeah. Too, too far gone now. Can't, no, can't totally. Like, yeah. I mean, if you, you can, but it's like, want to get rehired at Bogus, like, you know, or, or go for that corporate, like, graphic design gig. I'm like, I don't know. I think I want to see this through. I want to see where this goes. Like, so went for it. And she still works for me, too. She's my general manager. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. So, yeah. How big is your team now? Um, we're probably, like, six, you know, okay. like, uh, yeah. So, like, we were probably hovering around, like, three, three or four, like, when we just had the one store. And then we opened a Nampa store for a couple of years, which was like a crazy thing. And we actually closed it in 2019. Um, so I've heard the second location yeah. is the hardest one because organizations typically don't have the resources mm-hmm. and the system set up to mm-hmm. do the second store. What happened there? So in 2017, we decided to open the Banana Inc. Nampa store. And I think there was a part of me that's like proven concept with Boise let's try to replicate this concept. Mm -hmm. And like, we were thinking about where, and like at the time in 2017, like Caldwell was putting a bunch of money in their downtown. Nampa was like, you know, coming up with ways to like revitalize their downtown. And like, you can see how they've 
over since 2017 have changed in many ways. Um, so we found this little shop, again, one that like my friend was in or another local business. And we were like, we want to be in that spot. If we were to be in any spot, we'd like to be in that spot. And we ended up with that spot. So she was like, hey, we're leaving. Like, do you want the space? I'm like, yeah, I do. So we went for it. I think like it made us change a lot of stuff about the business, like structurally and like so that we could have mul multiple locations. But in the end, it was like, I just, I didn't have the passion for it, I think. Like I just, you know, it was, it, it doubled my work. Like it doubled like me having to travel a bunch to get out there and like, you know, it just, I don't know. There was something in it that I just, you know, I think, I think that whole, like, if it's not a hell yes, it's a no. Like, I, I just think there was something to that, that, you know, we, we weren't really ready to keep going with it. And then, so to close it in 2019 and then 2020, I was like, oh, actually, I kind of feel really good about that decision. Yeah. But, you know, especially with brick and mortar taking such a hard hit, um, during the pandemic, um, and we just invested in our online store. But I'm really thankful for that because, and I don't ever see it as like something like, oh, we failed in Nampa. Sure. I, I see it as like, we got to make a ton of awesome changes, learn how to have another location and kind of understand what it is and why we would pick somewhere to have another store and like what it would take too. So I take those lessons like, and I'm, I'm grateful for them a hundred percent. So, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, that, uh, proud of you for looking at it that way, right? Mm -hmm. You know, most people would would look at that and be like, ah, "Don't talk about that. I don't want. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be on a podcast and tell people about yeah. that." But, but way to go! Uh, I think it's I think it's something uh, most entrepreneurs. So if if you're an entrepreneur and you've had one successful venture, mm -hmm. starting a second one or a location is difficult, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's taxing just like the first. So. Yeah. No, yeah. absolutely. And I think that's we still get people <laughs> that come into the Boise store and they're like, "We miss your Nampa location," and I'm like. Yeah, I I get that. Like I, but I don't miss it. But um, I did love what it was, and I, I like am proud of our accomplishment in many ways of doing it. Um, and I think that is something to take away from because I I did struggle with the idea of like, did I fail in this in this thing? And I'm like, well, I'm making all the choices about whether I'm staying or going. So I think there's something different about being fully in the decision making as opposed to feeling like I have to leave. Like it's because it was successful in many ways. Like it made money and it had, you know, people out there. And, you know, I think I learned a lot about like, how do you get your staff ready for that? Because that's the biggest thing. Like if I could say there was one lesson I learned the most and I'm still learning, it's managing people and like getting people a part of your vision or like, you know, I like having somebody out there like 24 seven, like how do you inspire someone with to, you won't ever have anyone love it as much as you love it. But like, that was a huge deal too. How do you manage from a distance? Like, how do you do all these things and how do you get creative and like <laughs> inspire people for both things? Like it's, it's just a, it was just another level that like I learned a ton about myself a lot and, and also just like people in general. So, Yeah. People, uh, the hardest thing in business by far is mm -hmm. is people, right? Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, probably creating a design and putting it on a shirt. Is, mm -hmm. you, That's the fun part. You could do that all day long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and exactly. and, I, and I relate to that. I understand that. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you could look back and tell yourself one thing, right? Since you, since you started, what would you say? Tell myself one thing. Um, I think it would be probably be a little bit easier on myself, like um, trust the process or like where you're at. I think what's hard for me right now is I'm in this part of my my entrepreneurial journey that I'm back to this like or maybe always have been in this high anxiety place and just wanting everything to like be good. Like oh, I just want it to be so good and I just, you know, you put all this energy and effort in to something and like then 11 years later, you're still like, oh my gosh, like where, where I think if, um, if I could, I could look back at like having that story, I'm like, what a chill moment. But at the time I'm like, I was not chill. Like I was like, oh my God, this is a crazy thing. Like, but that, that's awesome to keep pushing yourself and to keep striving and to keep growing. But I think like to look at that person and say, man, if I could be there, I'd be so relaxed. Like, I think seeing that perspective and saying, well, then maybe you should just relax right now. 
Because 10 years from now, Lana will still be like, wow, what a chill place you were in, you know? So I think that would be the bigger lesson in all this for sure. So just enjoy, enjoy where you're at and like, it's gonna work out like one way or another, even if you have to close your Nampa store or you have to do something else or you have to pivot in many ways, like through a, a pandemic, like, you know, and, and we did. And I thought we did. I was so proud of us. Like I was so proud of our little business. And I think in that way, I'm like, but if you don't savor those moments, like you're just continually in a place of, of like high anxiety and, and wanting to everything to be perfect, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. It's, it's interesting to see the, the cycles that entrepreneurs go through, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's the always wanting to grow, always wanting to push, mm-hmm. you know, always wanting to be perfect. And, uh, it's, it's interesting when you look back at life and you go, okay, you know, those were the good times. And mm-hmm. it's like, nope, the good times are now. Like yeah. it's always that, always that time. So. Yeah, no, totally. And I think, um, like I would not tell my, myself like, oh, you should have done pivoted like this. You should have grown this. You should have kept Nampa or you should have done whatever and sought, like kept it through. I wouldn't change anything in terms of like what I consider a mistake. Mm-hmm. I would just have been more like, Hey, you got this, like, don't worry, like a little bit less, don't worry, you know, and, and you're going to get in that shop and you're going to go do that thing and you're going to make it to that show and it's going to happen. So like that, that would be the bigger message for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about your, uh, I'm going to guess your most iconic design, mm. um, uh, is the gun mm-hmm. shooting Idaho, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Maybe people don't realize that you designed that, right? Yeah. Where did that come from, that whole idea? Um, So we call it the tree gun strategically. We like the word tree first. Um, But that was like my second design I'd ever made. So when I was actually designing for Stanley, I was using the stage shape, playing with it in different ways, creative ways. And I was just spinning it in my – just spinning it to kind of like do this experiment of like, what what do you see? And I saw a little gun shape and I was like, oh my God, Idaho, like what a reputation. Um, Very kind of like, uh, I'd never even shot a gun. So I didn't really like, I was in my early twenties, never had shot a gun, like didn't have, wasn't, my dad wasn't a big hunter. Like I didn't have the background that I think a lot of people do, but I had the, like, I was very aware of like the national perception of Idaho. And so, um, which I just thought was humorous, like, you know, based on growing up here, living here, going to college here, like staying here, owning a home here, like my perception of Idaho is very different than I think how the nation sees us. And so it was more just a play on that and just like, you know, for humor's sake. And then, um, when, when I added the tree, cause I was like, it feels like it's missing something. And I'm like, a bullet is just like so harsh. Like that's not really the message I'm going for here. And I like chose a tree very, very strategically because I think it is back to like the nature aspect of living here and like the natural part of Idaho that make it so valuable. And so like that is like probably to me when I think of like you think of the space in it and, and the design of it, that is the most important piece to me. With it gone, where's the context? And so, yeah, it's definitely gotten attention on all sides and types and of people and ranges. And, and we get, that's probably besides what does banana ink mean? That's my most popular question that I've been asked or the most popular question. What does this mean? And so I even have it in our like binders for our employees. Like you're trained on how to talk about this design because I think it's really important to me that it's like, this was, this was grown out of being neutral in many ways, a neutral stance. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people don't want to see it that way. I know it's it's hard because I've felt conflicted about the design in, in many ways because people don't know the story and I'm not here to, I guess, explain. I am here to explain, I guess, on this. But in many ways, I'm like, people will think what they want to think, even if when you're straight up telling them. So, um, but yeah, it's been one that uh, my relationship to it has changed and, and grown over the years. Like we're talking about over a decade and and like where we are as a state and like what people cling to it. And um, I had a customer once who said that he thought it meant that Idaho's loaded with trees. 
And I thought it was the greatest way to describe the design that like resonated with me. But and I still tell people that I'm like, it's open to interpretation because that's what I think art is. <laughs> like we all have a different experience of it. So whatever you experience maybe isn't the wrong answer. Like, and I'm not necessarily, I, I just usually am like, it wasn't born out of being political or being like pro or anti anything. It, or some people are like, are you anti-tree? I'm like, who's anti-tree? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's crazy. But, you know, in many ways though too, like, I get the, it's, it's definitely gone way further than I ever imagined when I was designing it. So yeah, it's interesting. There you go. Yeah. Hopefully that answers your question. No, that's great. <laughs> it's, it's an iconic design. You see it everywhere yeah. and it's like, okay, like that's interesting. Yeah. And then unique. they, you, they make up a story of who designed it and what dude designed it. Like what gun toting guy made that design. I'm like, just some small girl, like <laughs> graphic that's, designer, you know? That's so funny. yeah. Yeah. Um, in your growth and in your success, have you been knocked off? Has that been something you've had to deal with? Oh my gosh. I mean, yes. Yeah. If that exasperation says anything, you know, as a graphic designer too, like, uh, I just, it's so hard because it's just a not respected art form at all. Like people go onto Google, they Google something and they just take it off of the website. You know, if you've been in any sort of creative, um, realm, I think you've come up against this. And it's been really challenging for me because we've actually spent money on lawyers to be like, hey, cease and desist. Like, you can't just take art. And, like, again, shout out to our fan base. Like, they have countless people have sent me messages of, like, hey, we love you. And we found this place that's, like, stealing your designs. And uh, it's been really challenging because it's like sad to me and 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 hard. It, it's like I take it so personally, even though I know I shouldn't. Um, because it's like, and it also people just don't know like what copyright is and how that works. And and like I've approached people that are like, hey, you can't take that, and they're like, oh my god, I had no idea. I didn't even know it was copyright protected. And I'm like, yeah, there are ways to like do that work, but you know, I I actually have struggled probably with that if I'm thinking like some sort of emotional labor of this business that's the one I've probably struggled with the most um and one that I like I just don't even want to google right now like I haven't googled it in a minute because I yeah. usually I had I've had I've trained employees on how to like make file file on Facebook and file on Amazon and file on these things to be like take that content down um because I just have such a hard time looking at it you know, and, and being like, why, why? But yes, that is a big one. So in, in that long way of saying, yes, yeah. <laughs> we've struggled with it. So business is personal. I, um, people say it's not, or, yeah. or they say that, that you shouldn't treat it that way. I struggle with that. Yeah. Like, I, I know it's not personal. feels very personal to me. Oh you yeah. Know? So I, if I were in your shoes, I would, I would not be happy, yeah. but, but kudos to you. It sounds no, like you're taking like a champ. So. Yeah. I mean, I try, I, I think that's the thing is like, it's been a lot of people like they buy a vinyl cutter and so they start cutting decals. Sure. And I'm like, you know, if I go after every single person making a decal and giving it to one of their buddies, like I won't have time to do anything else with my business. So I've just kind of like in that many, in that way I've chosen my battles, like through, through these moments of like, oh, I'm going to let that one go. But if you're like straight up printing t-shirts, I'm like, Hey, could you not do that please? That would be nice. Like same product. Yeah. yeah. Like identical. Like, and, and I think that's the other hard part too, is like people, um, just in, just in art in general, if I can talk on that note, like people have this idea of like, if you take something and change it this much, you're fine. Well, how much that is. And then it's like, you know, what does that look like? I always tell people, I'm like, if you're in ever in doubt of whether or not you've created something that could be infringing on someone's copyright, just contact an intellectual property lawyer. And maybe just say, hey, is this cool? Like, have a small meeting. Like, if you wanted to do your due diligence and create something out of, like, you know, nothing um, and think that you're the original, like, that's that's the hard part is, you know, I think it is on us to kind of do our work and do some research. Like, now it's so hard because if I come up with an Idaho design, I have to do a lot of research. Like, there are a lot of yeah. Idaho apparel companies now. And so... Um, yeah, just making sure like we're all we're all doing our part in in many ways, you know, both as a graphic designer and not. So, 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, awesome. I appreciate you being here today, Lana. Thanks yeah. so much. If, yeah. if people wanted to find out more about you guys, how would they do that? Well, they could go to our website, banana-ink.com, um, or you could follow us on social media, Instagram, banana ink shop, all one word. So yeah, reach out, say, Hey, come check out our online shop. So, or, or come say, Hey, in Boise. So yeah. Awesome. Well, we appreciate you. Thank yeah, you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for joining us on the show today. It was great to hear Lana's story and the steps she has taken in her business to do what she loves and grow to the next level. Growing a business is difficult and you'll have every opportunity to quit, but we are here to tell you not to give up. Keep going. We promise you it's worth it. Life is short. Make a ruckus. Make a ruckus.